Good morning, crypto Twitter, it's Misty Crypto Spreading crypto without you showing this beneficial to my generation Shout out to all my people, Gen Z needs to be included It's really that simple We are savage, amazeball, zesty Making money at the same time, spread peace I feel empty if you don't include Gen Z Better change the world, so y'all better get ready Misty Crypto, I'm never backing down I got a wax account, you used to say it What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Missing Crypto Show. I hope everybody is having a lovely day today. Guys, I am feeling the zest. The zest is absolutely radiating. We have so much going on during today's show. But as always, before we get started, I want to thank two amazing sponsors of the Missing Crypto Show. First being Wax Blockchain, who we are joined by today with Schnazzy. The Wax Blockchain is absolutely killing the game. We are giving away tons of NFTs today. We actually, if you guys see in the chat, you're going to get a free NFT for today's show. And the art was actually done by Schnazzy here. So guys, please click that link and share it out with friends so they could get a free nft as well next ballet ballet is absolutely awesome a great way to store your crypto we are going to be giving away one of these awesome ballet wallets today our guest will give us a keyword and you guys will enter that into the chat i'll pick a winner if you win please send me a dm on twitter with your email address i'll get you started also if you guys want to have a wax wallet but did not have one yet sign up through wax.atomichub.io you'll pass all the what, five wax fees so that way you could get in get Get started and now let's jump into today's zesty guest the one and only schnazzy from wax how are you doing hello it's team crypto i'm glad to be here i think this is going to be a really fun conversation i've been looking forward to this show uh since you started your shows really <laughs> and i'm i was so honored that you were able to ask me and i was even more excited to say yes Oh, thank you. Like, you're amazing. Like, you really have this amazing energy. And I'm happy that you're with Wax and because you're an actual artist and you're just really out here grinding. How did you get started with art, by the way? Because the piece that you made today is gorgeous. You definitely made me look better than I actually look. So thank <laughs> you for that. Oh, my gosh. No, you're gorgeous. <laughs> but I, uh, I actually have done art since I was a little kid. Um, my aunt, challenged me she was 11 when I was five and she used to draw these pictures of like monkeys and stuff and uh she'd always tell me like look how good this is I'm like wow you're so amazing at art I wish I could be as good as you one day she's like well good luck you're never gonna be better than me and then, oh my like, gosh. from there <laughs> yeah from there I really just did it out of spite <laughs> and uh so you know I I'd been working on it a lot mainly I was a traditional watercolor artist and oh, wow. got into acrylics for a long time. And I was really just focused on painting until I had my second son. And by that point, I was like, I can't have toddlers around paints at all anymore. So it's really <laughs> been like 20 years <laughs> of painting. Um, and then I tried to get into digital art. And shortly after I took the full swing into digital art, people were like, oh my gosh, you should make NFTs. Um, and yeah. That's that's how I got it into really like putting my art into a digital space. That's amazing. And what? how did you feel the transition was to go from, um, you know, traditional watercolor acrylics to drawing on an iPad and doing this digitally? Was that hard for you? Yes. <laughs> oh, at first, I could really only capture how to make like cartoony style art. And my first NFTs ever were extremely cartoony, like maybe just like cell shaded. I learned about cell shading and things of that nature, really focusing on how to make clean line art. Uh, but the undo feature was really fun. Yeah, <laughs> and that's everything useful. Everything looks so much, so much cleaner than I was used to. Uh, but that also became like obsessive with like how lines really move. Um, but it feels pretty natural to draw on an iPad because I, before I bought my iPad, I actually bought like one of those $20 tablets that you would draw and it would show up on your computer screen. Oh, um, that's pretty cool. It was really hard to figure out though. <laughs> 
but they're only like $20 and you can use the paint Sai is a free program. Um, and that's what I got started with. And then after four months, I was like, I need something easier than this. My brain is not geared towards, uh, get towards this type of art so getting the ipad was a huge upgrade i actually even have it in front of me i'm like i'm using it all the time <laughs> do you have like an apple pencil for that yes yes but they also have other um tablet pencils as well i even got mine refurbished it's a older i think it's uh I think it's a first generation ipad and i think i got it for like 260 dollars refurbished on amazon so it is like relatively a decent investment i've made that hand over foot like <laughs> multiple yeah. times over with the art that I've been able to create. So I, if any artists are really looking to take that plunge from traditional art to digital art, I highly recommend the iPad. It is a fantastic utility. Absolutely. I've seen a ton of artists just get into it with the iPad and just create some beautiful things like Fuocious. I've seen, I don't know if you uh, know Fuocious. He's another teen that just made it really big in the space and his art is absolutely gorgeous and he does it on the iPad and it's just like, I love the way it all looks. I love like, you know, art in general, just you, how you create art, how you actually visualize things is amazing. Is there any like sort of type of thing that you would like to create art out of? Because I know like what you did for today's POAP was absolutely absolutely great and it was just like a character are you into doing like character type stuff are you into like landscapes or is there any favorite thing you're you're mostly into creating well this is an interesting question um so I really enjoy doing like landscapes and I really like doing paintings whenever I'm doing a traditional painting uh but I really feel like in the digital sense being able to capture like a character is really fun for me to do um just because you can add a lot of personality and a lot of story this I, I wish I had more time to make your piece just because uh the background wasn't as dynamic as I typically like but I was able to really, I feel like, have some and bring some sort of essence to the character of you that I was able to create. And I think it was a lot of fun. But typically, I really actually just like getting lost in paints. So um, I've been making viral NFTs for the past three weeks, really like tangible physical paintings and Ooh. getting back in touch with those moments because it's like before I started painting again three weeks ago, it's been like two years since I picked up an actual paintbrush. Wow. Um, just because, like I said, it's so dangerous to have paints around toddlers. And I, they even got into the black paint, which is embarrassing, but it's <laughs> the truth. <laughs> um, so, like, they have some black paints on their wall now uh, just because they ran off with one paintbrush. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> but, no, I really like just getting lost inside of art. And sometimes it'll start out as a landscape and then turn into, like, a woman or like have like flowers growing out of places they don't belong but it's just it's fun to experiment and uh, inside of traditional art it feels easier to do just because whenever you make a mistake with your brush stroke you can always turn it into somebody else Bob Ross uh, as many of us know as the proprietor of that kind of thought process um, and I like to do the same thing so um, it really just stems kind of more of a fun type of dynamic in your art yeah, that's that's amazing. I absolutely love that. I like the way you think. I like the way like artists like just like you just go about things like how you feel. And I think your piece is great from today, by the way. Like I, I when you showed me that, I was like, whoa, like actually, whoa, because like I, I just I, I can't even draw a smiley face. So it's hard for me to like imagine just like going in there and just creating all these things. I mean, the detail was great. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And when, how did you actually first find crypto? And did you hear about NFTs first or did you hear about like Bitcoin and other things before NFTs? So I actually was an avid investor of stocks um, before I found out about NFTs or crypto. And I was a part of this movement for financial freedom in the markets um, whenever it comes to like malicious short selling. Uh, so there's a lot of different stocks in the stock market that are being put under and being put out of business because malicious short sellers are just like making the stock worth nothing for each and trading it back and forth and it's a huge manipulation tactic and the sec is putting in new laws because of the movement of the uh the individual traders standing up to these basically these big entities and hedge funds and i was a part of this movement for amc specifically and the community was amazing and they always called themselves like the smooth brain crayon eating apes because that's what actual financial articles wrote about the investors who are just buying and holding the same kind of crypto mentality, right? But buying and holding investments so that short sellers couldn't actually um, get the stocks to, to sell. And it was an interesting, 
situation. And really, there's been a lot of laws that have come into place because of the AMC Ape movement and the GME Ape movement. Um, and it's not the work's not done yet. But at the beginning of whenever I entered around um, like January and February of last year, um, it was at its peak of interest, right? A lot of people were getting attention uh, or were garnering their attention towards this movement. And they were like, we need t-shirts, we need signs to do. And I was like, okay, I just got my iPad. I'm going to be like drawing up smooth brain, brain ape art. And people were like, oh my gosh, we love this so much. You should put this on the blockchain to signify the mark in history. And I was like, the blockchain, well, what is that? And that's actually what drew me into understanding what cryptocurrency was. Wow. Um, yeah. And that's, that's where I really just started deep diving into Ethereum. And I know I'm, a, I love wax. That's where I am now, but I did start with Ethereum because I didn't know about wax. Um, and wow. I started in the Ethereum space, really learned about the difference between cryptocurrencies that have blockchains versus the other ones. Um, really understood what Bitcoin was because I had heard about Bitcoin before anything else, just because, um, I think a long time ago, I, this is really embarrassing, but a long time ago, whenever I was like a teenager, I was prompted to sign up for PayPal and I would get five Bitcoin for signing up for PayPal as like one of their like campaigns that they had. Oh, wow. And I, I dug through so many old emails just to try to find that like campaign thing that no they had. Way. I, I couldn't find it anywhere. So I, I don't think I have access to it anymore, but a long time ago I had access to five Bitcoin and now I don't, but that was the only thing that I knew about cryptocurrency before the AMC movement. And then I learned about Ethereum and I really started digging into, well, how do you create NFTs on Ethereum? And there was not a lot of resources at the time. Um, so really by April of last year is whenever I finally was able to put my art on the blockchain um, Ethereum. under Ethereum. Yeah. And I worked there for, I was in Ethereum for a long time. I had a couple of really cool collections. They were selling regularly. Um, and then really I started learning about Wax blockchain whenever AMC decided to put their investor connect token on Wax. Uh, and I was like, well, what the heck is Wax? I've never heard of this. And they were like, oh, it's certified, car certified carbon neutral. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is important. How have I not heard about this? And uh, so after a little bit of digging, I had made some friends already in the WAC space and I didn't realize they were in the WAC space. And that was Brett Blackberg and Crypto Kumas. And they started holding Twitter spaces and I showed up and I was like, well, what's WAX? And then they told me and that was in January. Um, and then right before the end of January is actually whenever I put my first NFT on WAX. That was really exciting. Wow. So what, would it, what was your first piece on Wax? What, what was that of? And what's the name of your collection on Wax? So I now have three collections on Wax, but the actual first piece of the collection was for the Schnazzy Saga. And the first piece was the Galactic Genesis. And it was, um, it, it was a character piece. So she's uh, a really awesome outer space style girl. It looks really um, retro futuristic inspired. And she's got like her two little laser guns and it actually is part of a story that my fiance and I were writing. And from there we released um, weekly drops of the story that we had written until the book was done. And so every single week we would release a chapter of the book and then also like posters styled NFTs of um, what happened in that book. And it was really exciting because it went on for 18 weeks and we wrote a whole entire book that just got done with the editing phase um, and it's all on Amazon already and the actual book will be published on Amazon this next week but it's on Amazon uh, Kindle Vela right now so it's neat it, that that happened so fast we wrote a whole entire book in like five months so that's <laughs> insane man a whole book so Schnazzy's an author man this is great. So how do you feel that like, you know, even in a book could be on the blockchain, right? Like, what, how do you like, do you picture, oh, we can actually talk about, you know, viral NFTs. So VIRL is a, a, a new, I guess, type of NFT that is gonna is on wax already. And there might be more expansion into that. I don't know. But I do know that maybe like that book could be a viral NFT, no? 
Absolutely. And we do have plans for this. So we wanted to reward some of our early stakeholders of that specific collection with um, like a, a hand bound book. So like back in the day, whenever they used to print books, they would actually do the entire cover hand binding them and doing like leather work and stuff. And uh, I took a class in college for that. So there's going to be oh, three wow. of those. Yeah, there's going to be three of those redeemable NFTs that we're not going to like ship out to those early collectors, but we're going to airdrop them to them. Um, and they'll be able to either put it up on secondary market or um, redeem it themselves. And I think that'll be a cool dynamic for them. But as far as viral NFTs go, I totally want to talk about this because it's really yes. neat. They're only supposed to exist on wax because they do have the patent for the technology of a viral NFT. They were very, very wise. Wax is an old blockchain and they got this patent for the utility back in 2017, just because they saw the future of what NFTs could really bring to inventory systems for web two type of economies and really bring them into web three. And I am so excited to see what comes of this patent technology. I know that there is a viral market under beta right now, but we'll, we'll just get a hint about that. Um, and I'll let you guys kind of like think about what, what that could really mean for the state of wax and what that could really mean for NFTs in general. So what a VIRL NFT means, means virtual in real life. So any type of NFT that represents uh, item in real life will be able to be redeemed or traded again on the blockchain. And we've actually already kind of tested the waters with this with our collections like Funko and Hot Wheels. And those Woo. NFTs, this is this is really neat. Those NFTs trade on an average of eight times before they're redeemed. So like think about all the shipping and labor and production costs if this was a wide scale movement for people to really utilize uh a viral aspect of an NFT for goods to be traded eight times before they're actually redeemed, right? So like, think about if like your mom's birthday was today and you didn't buy her anything, you're like, oh my gosh, well, it's in the middle of, it's the first day of August, it's too hot to go get her like a sweater or something. I'm just gonna go real quick on the viral market and buy her a, like this, this sweater, right? And she can redeem it whenever it comes closer to the winter time when she would need it, or she can just resell it if she doesn't like it. But it's a really cool present idea that you can do right then and there. Oh, look, I thought of you, it has a llama on it, you love it. Um, <laughs> you know, and she can either hold on to that and then redeem it in the winter time whenever she needs it, or she can just sit on that NFT um, or put it back up on the market. And because every time an NFT is redeemed on the market, that NFT is burned, it makes the leftover supply, you know, more rare. And so it really creates a uh, demand for a different type of inventory pro process whenever it comes to a marketing strategy. So I'm really excited to see how the viral aspect really plays out um, in the future. Absolutely. I, I'm really excited for viral NFTs. I think it's really going to make a huge difference in the way we transact, the way we do things. Because like you said, like you could buy a gift, you could buy pretty much anything. I mean, what I would love to see is just physical pieces of art. You know what I mean? Just being able to buy a piece of art. And if I like it, I want to put it in my home. I, all I have to do is just send that NFT get it to my home and that's it like that that's absolutely amazing i think it's really going to change a lot what would you like to see be a viral nft what's like the thing you so, want to see the most the thing that i want to see the most is really potters under the space um what you said about the viral paintings is really cool because the way that i i actually tested the waters with this recently and held an auction for a viral painting um that's what i was doing those real paintings for and whenever you have the nft after you redeem it then you actually blend the nft into a new nft that has a redeemed tag on it and then with that nft you can still give that nft utility like let's say in a stakeable game or something so people can still create resources for nfts after they've redeemed them and i think it would be really cool to see more more traditional style artists under the space that aren't necessarily like painter artists but like i want special mugs i want to see all kinds of different like things that you would typically see on etsy but them have like extra utility after you already got them so yeah i don't know i would like to see more of a support for that kind of system i know that fossils might be hitting the the virl market which is interesting um, I know that uh, gemstones also are going to be hitting the markets, and I think this is really cool for the history of artifacts, right? So if we get more artifacts on the blockchain, the actual history of ownership is going to be stored in a way that can't be counterfeit or made up, and I think it's going to be really fun, like, 
for example, Edgar Allan Poe's desk sold, I think a couple years back for, I think it was like $30,000, right? Whoa. Let's say if that was a, yeah, if that was an NFT, then you would be able to see who owned it right after Edgar Allan Poe, if you wanted to, and have that certificate of ownership, just as a NFT. And I think that's a really fun way to, a fun way to utilize a history storage device on the, on the blockchain. But I also really want to see, um, I want to see more video games as NFTs in a sense of like, maybe, yeah, maybe not necessarily like being able to play your video game and getting skins. I do want to see that. Don't get me wrong. But I also would like to see things function as like a standalone video cartridge kind of NFT situation where like only people who owned the, like the actual NFT itself functions as a video game, almost like a widget. And I know that we've got some developers on WAX who are already trying to make that happen um, just as awesome community members. So it's really cool to see these kinds of innovation uh really take place on our blockchain absolutely i'm excited i i do see a lot you know coming for wax even though like you know a lot has happened but i do see a lot more happening for wax you know just especially like the adoption that's going to happen especially with this viral nft marketplace like i can't imagine how many doors are going to be open for this i think you know like this could be like the next shopify almost yeah, and you know what's even more fun? Nefty Blocks, it's a marketplace on Wax. They actually just launched their embedded feature for marketplace listings. Yeah, on on people's websites itself. So it is exactly like a Shopify experience because you'll be able to just go and look at somebody's collection through their marketplace that can be completely customized on your on your website. And I think that's a really intuitive way to help onboard more web two users into web three, just because they really get to see the, the use case and who they're supporting whenever it's something personal, like on a website. Absolutely. I was actually going to ask you, it's in the title of the video. How could we onboard more people into NFTs? What do you think is, you know, one thing besides maybe VRL NFTs that could just really blow this out of the water? I would like to see the use case of POAPs more. Um, and POAP means proof of attendance protocol. And same, Wax same. Blockchain, yeah, Wax Blockchain lets people do that incredibly easily because they can offer free NFTs due to there being no gas fees, right? So if you have the ability to set up a Wax Cloud wallet or an Anchor wallet, um, then there are a lot of different ways you can bypass that starting crypto fee and be able to collect an NFT very quickly. Um, like Miss Team Crypto said earlier, the Atomic Hub actually released a way Right. As soon as you log into Atomic Hub, you'll see on the top right hand corner a space to create a wallet and they bypass all the starting crypto fees for you. And a lot of people do free drops on um, and free claim links on Atomic Hub and Nefty Blocks. And I know that we did one today. Yes. Um, but I really think that this is the direction that we need to go to make onboarding easier. And I say that one of the first use cases would be being able to set up people like Miss Teen Crypto with a PO app whenever they have a show or even, you know, your favorite streamers on Twitch or YouTube to have like a piece of art that they can give away to people who already like that streamer, already like that content creator and wouldn't mind having a no stakes way to collect something that they already like. So it's not necessarily they're buying or gaining this NFT because they think it'll hold value. They're getting the NFT because they like the person. Um, and they want to have something that represents the person that they like. And I think that's a really great way to onboard more people and show them, hey, listen, like NFTs, they're not all bad for the environment. The Wax blockchain is certified carbon neutral. They yep. use proof of stake technology. Um, there's a lot of use cases here. Anytime that NFT trades on the secondary market, you know, that artist gets a kickback either from the collection. They also can share revenue with the person that the NFT is of. Um, so I think just doing more things like this is really important. Also, I would love to see more po apps at like concert events. Yes, and me too. Me too. Yeah, exactly. Like, how cool would it be if I know that uh, Lala is was it Lollapalooza just happened? Yes, Lollapalooza was awesome. I was watching it on Hulu. Yeah, a lot of people were. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it would be just really neat if like, or even even if you offered an NFT for people who attended Lollapalooza in person and a different NFT for the ones who were able to watch at home. I mean, it's just a really cool way for people to just like prove that they attended something. Um, it really just show that they are a part of history, right? Because what's really neat about NFTs is that they are kind of the best resource for any kind of studying of culture in the past. So like 
Imagine what life is going to be like in 80 years, whenever you're able to like actually look back on your great grandma's purchases and what she did and what she was a part of just by looking at her transactions in her crypto wallet, you know, like that's such an interesting concept to me that like, you can see exactly who she supported. You can see what kind of trends she was a part of. You can see what she created as a NFT creator. If she was into that, like you can see what she redeemed. Yeah. Um, and it's just going to be a really interesting dynamic for the future of really cultural studies. And I think that everything we're doing now is really going to pave the way for the future. I agree 100%. NFTs are artifacts. 100% artifacts. This is all historical stuff. I mean, just, you know, even the creators, I mean, um, you know, Stash, Crypto Stash, Ken Bozak, myself, you, um, Senor Lupe, just a bunch of people um, that are creating on Wax. Like, you know, people are going to look back at this and, you know, years from now and be like, wow, like these were the first NFTs. Like these were the first images on the blockchain because realistically, like, yeah, we are one of the first people to do this. It's absolutely insane. We are still so, so early. It's actually crazy. I think, you know, what is one thing you think people are going to look back on the most from this time? Do you think it might be like the gaming aspect? Do you think it might be like kind of like that board eight movement like the, with the PFPs? What do you think is going to probably stand out about maybe this 2021 to 2022 NFT boom? So there's a couple of things that I would really like to point out about this question. And the first one of them is the very first thing that you mentioned whenever you're talking about like Ken Bozak, yourself, Crypto Stash, Senor Lupe, um, a lot of other big influencers in the WAC space. It's super interesting because uh, the very first thing that I think about is like the Federalist Papers. I'm not sure if you've ever read those, but it was kind of like all the big important people who came together to write uh, all of our major important documents in the United States of America. I know not everybody watching this can relate to that, but it was like some of the nation's biggest brains coming together, interacting all of their letters in one book um, where they were interacting with each other. And the blockchain is going to kind of be like that too. I mean, I feel like all of us have had collaborations with each other. The whole entire WAX community has had creations with each other and people are going to be able to see how tight knit of a community that really is and how it started expanding um, and be able to study literally every aspect of like, okay, well, this is whenever people started collecting from this collection. This is whenever this collection started doing collaborations with these other collections. And it's going to be a really interesting dynamic because I really see like something as historically uh, important as the Federalist Papers are really going to be what kind of dynamic is going to be able to be shown with NFTs in general. And with that being said, talking about the overarching NFT trends of 2021 and 2020, it's going to be interesting, right? Because what ultimately will bring the relevance in the future for what would be looked back upon is which marketplace and which blockchain really comes out um, as the one that's important at whatever time that you're going to look back into history and see. So like, for example, um, in 20 years, whatever blockchains that people are using, which I don't think it's going to be just one, I think it's going to be a handful of them because I really think that the future of the space is going to be um, adaptability and cross blockchain mechanisms working together. There's a lot of bridges happening. There's a lot of layer twos happening. And I yep. think that I think the utility of them being able to talk to each other is going to be one of the most important aspects of where blockchain innovation is going to really shine 20 years from now. But I agree. with that being said, the use cases of blockchain 20 years from now will probably look back on what was going on in these spaces um, in 2021 and 2020 and really, really see the dynamic about what was important to people whenever they're creating. I mean, I was on Ethereum before I was on Wax, like I said, and a lot of Ethereum creators that I had originally entered the space with are not here anymore. Um, that's and that's true. the unfortunate truth. Yeah. And that's because a lot of them were involved with, um, I wouldn't say rug pulls, but they were involved with NFTs for the wrong reason. Right. So a lot of them were creating collections because they wanted quick cash. It wasn't because they were passionate artists. It wasn't because they were trying to innovate in the space. They wanted quick cash and a community of friends um to help support their pockets and that's the unfortunate truth of a lot of what happened on ethereum um, unfortunately and I, yeah and unfortunately and this 
but it's not the truth of what happened everywhere. And that's something that really drew me into wax and what I loved about wax because everybody is creating in wax. Like most of the wax community is developers and artists who are trying to create something cool. And I think that really shines whenever you go and you look up like the hashtag wax Wednesday, everybody is excited about their drops. You've got people who are creating like wallet viewers with dynamics that can like play videos and play musical NFTs really fast. That's awesome. Um, yeah, like creating all of these solutions for problems nobody ever realized would be NFT problems. Like, for example, an artist like me, I can create a pack on the Wax blockchain easily. Yes. Like all, the, all the tools are there. You don't have to know any development or any code because developers are like, well, how do we make this easier for people to use? Oh, okay, we just make it a one button push. Do you want this to be a pack? Yes. What do you want your pools to be? Okay, here you go. You know, instead of having to learn how to develop and code something like a pack or pack opening mechanic or an animation, all I have to do is provide the images or the videos or the music that I would want as an NFT um, and be able to put it together. Same thing with like crafting. I remember it was huge when the Board Ape Yacht Club had their crafting mechanic for the serums to do a mutant ape. Um, and that was really big in the space. And everyone was like, it oh was. my gosh, this is groundbreaking. But Wax had actually already tried this like That's months beforehand. That's what I was saying, man. Yeah, with yeah. like Capcom. They did the Street yep. Fighter and FTs. And it was just so funny to see just like the, the general community like, wow, this is groundbreaking. And it really, it already had been done. And <laughs> not <laughs> I feel like that's a lot with like, you know, the things that are happening in the space and wax like a lot of people are like, Oh, my God, I can't believe this is a thing. But like wax has been doing this for so long already. So it was like, Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, the first one that comes to mind is like the Solana a smart NFTs that they're working so hard on creating and I feel so bad because I'm like, you guys, that's just mutable data yeah like we've 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 had that one <laughs> yeah it's it's insane i i mean airdrops like i've been doing airdrops on wax for the longest and people are just discovering airdrops on like you know other platforms which yes it's great but I, like on ethereum like airdrops aren't even feasible but like you know doing airdrops on wax is amazing like this drop that i have with a j right now guys if you haven't checked it out i'm gonna drop the link again but this drop if you collect both pieces all i have to do is just send you an nft and it just pops up in your wallet like it's the most amazing thing um i mean someone someone in the chat said i guess it cost them oh chili said cost me 230 dollars to do one giveaway on eth last year like that's crazy man that is crazy but ETH yeah, gas fees aren't too bad right now but still it's a few bucks yeah and i think that's just because of like what i said earlier about the sentiment of the eth creators really being there a lot of them being there for the wrong reasons um yes. are leaving the space now so the demand for the blocks is not as much on ethereum right now but with that being said yeah no you have to pay for every transaction on ethereum and that's kind of what makes something like a pack opening not that feasible because you would have to pay for each transaction of the pack opening and that's three signatures i think so you have like yeah. the buying and then the opening and then the receiving of the nfts from the opening contract um so like if you were to do something like a pack creation on ethereum people would have to pay gas fees three times to get whatever was inside and that's 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 a insane lot. So that's insanity yeah Too much so there's money. not a lot of not a lot of room for innovation on what the transactions can be themselves on Ethereum. And it's, it's the unfortunate truth. So I think that, I mean, layer twos like Polygon are getting a little bit more popular, but I remember also whenever I got started into Ethereum, I tested the waters with Polygon and got immediate backlash just because um, a lot of people are getting scammed with Polygon NFTs because they had, the really? they didn't have like a standardized contract. Um, they had, uh, they were able to create their own contracts that had a mechanic to where like, if you burned those polygon NFTs, they would actually gain access to your wallet. So it was like written into the contract to be very scammy. And oh, so no. people just hated, yeah. So people just hated polygon NFTs. If your collection was on polygon at the time, this was like summer of last year, like nobody would buy from it because they were scared that you were going to like scam them or something if they signed a contract just because they don't have a standardized contract and wax does. Um, they use the atomic standard contract and it helps prevent those kinds of things from happening. And I think that in order for us to push forward in the NFT space as innovators, we really have to start making these things um, really, we got to hire the standard of what it is to make an NFT and what it is to have contracts on NFTs. Um, because a standardized contract across the chain really would help elim eliminate the, um, the use cases there for like scams. Um, but 
there's so much, so much to be made. We are still so early and the utility of what an FT could be in the future, literally three years from now, could be completely different than what we've got going on right now. I agree 100%. I also, I actually want to drop um, this awesome ballet wallet. So Shnazi, do you mind giving a word for friends to enter in the chat to win one of these? Just a word off the top of my head? <laughs> yeah, just a word, something simple, something cool. You know what? This uh, you should do Beetlejuice, and I say that because Beetlejuice was one of the Broadway shows that was playing during NFT NYC, and that's where I got to meet Miss Teen Crypto in person. Oh my gosh! Yes, we finally got to meet at NFT NYC. How did you feel about NFT NYC, considering that like it was just an it, it was just a great time, and Wax had a a banging banging booth, man. It's beautiful. Well, thank you. Uh, we, t we took a lot of pride in that, especially where we were at locationally uh, at NFT NYC, because they set us right across, right across from the OpenSea, which is Ethereum's major marketplace, uh, right across from their booth. And that was <laughs> such an awesome dynamic for us because we were able to teach people who are used to using OpenSea as a platform all about what WAX is and what kind of solutions we could offer to any of the problems that they had um with other marketplaces on other blockchains and so the positioning that we were in was fantastic and this is actually the first nft nyc that i'd ever gone to um and i thought it was really interesting because the state of the markets we all know they weren't that great no um most of the mentality of the people going there were kind of mildly frustrated but they were also looking for developers that were going to be coming out on top of this bear market and that was the perfect opportunity for Wax to shine, it really. Absolutely. And I feel like we did. We were able to give away, I think it was like 2,600 POAPs in a two day span whenever wow. we were doing, yeah, when we were doing our, our booth and helping everybody get set up with Wax wallets. Um, and that was just an incredible moment because we were at also advertising the Hot Wheels Garage NFTs and then the Blockchain Brawlers. And we were able to answer all kinds of questions. It was just really, really a good time. I feel like whenever we were there, people gave us more time, more of the time of day um, because they saw that we were still building in the space. And Absolutely. That we really pulled out all the stops for this booth. <laughs> and I, I think it was a testament to how much we believe in ourselves. And I think that that was a really good showcase to other people about what we're doing. I mean, the bear market hasn't really affected that many wax creators that much. There's still so many secondary sales. Wax is still maintaining one of the highest transactions of all blockchains as far as like average daily transactions go. Um, and innovations and updates to all marketplaces are constantly happening across the board. It's really exciting. The morals in the Wax fam are still really high. And we're all able to coalesce into these Twitter spaces together that we host and talk about it. And our listening and engagement for the Twitter spaces has actually gone up quite a bit over the past two months. So since NFT NYC, we've been seeing a lot more people interested in what we have to say. So I think it was really beneficial for us as WAX. Um, and I think it also kind of put things into perspective for us about maybe instead of hosting, I mean, of course, we're going to keep going to NFT NYC, right? But oh, maybe yeah. instead of like going to more events, we'll actually possibly start hosting our own. And we thought that would be really fun and also maybe encourage more meetups for the for our WAX fam. Yes, 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 yes. That would be so amazing. We need wax meetups. I feel like that would be amazing. Like, you know, there's like Bitcoin, there's Bitcoin 21. There's always like East Denver. Why isn't there like a wax NYC or like, you know, a wax LA, like something that that would just be so cool. Like that would be great just to have like all the wax friends do like a lot of VIRL NFTs. Like that would just be so, so sick. Like, I think I think that's needed. I mean, you guys actually threw a great um, after party at NFT NYC, which I had a great time at where William Quigley was speaking, Mike Rubinelli. What did you feel about like meeting everyone from the WAX ecosystem in person? I know I saw um, Matt from Tree Peace. I know he's in the chat right now. But yeah, how did you feel about that event? That was really cool. It was so much fun. And shout out to Matt. He's an amazing person. <laughs> yeah, he's so cool. He donated wax to somebody in the chat so they could fill up on their RAM to claim more NFT. So that was very nice of you, Matt. 
Thank you, Matt. I really appreciate that. You know what? I should have worn my tree piece shirt. He was he gave me a tree piece shirt and Missing Crypto and I were talking about representing the wax shirts, but I didn't have a wax shirt. But I could have worn a tree piece shirt um, because he was he was really nice and gave it to me at that rooftop event. So oh, I really Matt. thought it was a <laughs> I know, right? I really thought it was amazing to be able to see how many people made the trek to come out to New York to make that rooftop event because so many of our community members were just developing their own games or developing their own. One particular person is uh, Nick T who did the wallet viewer and it's so awesome. It's called Waxworks. He's the one building the gadgets right now uh, and the widgets for NFTs inside of the Wax blockchain. And I think that's such a neat Dope. thing. Yeah, but like all of Atomic Hub guys, all of the NFT Hive guys, so many artists and creators, so many people who are making games in the space were able to be there. And I think it was such an intimate setting. Um, and I think that was incredibly important because it was a place that conversations could really happen and people could really be around each other. There were free drinks. Um, and it helped open up the room for people to really talk about what they were doing. And instead of like, you know, I, I've been in a lot of conversations with people over that week that were like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe Ethereum's down or, you know, like, oh, what are you going to do? Like, do you think that the blockchains are going to make it out or do you think NFTs are dead? And like, oh gosh. I heard those I heard those conversations around me the entire time. And I was like, why? We're not having these conversations. We're having like solution conversations or like we're talking about how to make each other's projects better or giving them advice about like where to market better or how to reach their audience that they're trying to get to or what kind of use cases that your products can have as far as NFTs and utility goes. And the entire community is the type of people that talks about those kind of things instead of like wind moon, you know, <laughs> it's, Literally. it's, it's really interesting to see. And in that night, I mean, we, <laughs> It was fun. at the end of the night, we were supposed to end it at, I think, 930. And we didn't get everybody outside until like 10, 15. I was one of the so... last to leave. I was literally the last one out. <laughs> I, I remember that because I was like, OK, I'm going to carry this giant brawler. <laughs> that was <laughs> hilarious. Part. And all the hot yes. sauce. There was actual hot sauce, guys. Yeah, and the hot sauce is pretty good. I hope that you guys can try some of that brawler's hot sauce in the future. But uh, and that's actually a viral NFT is that um, that those limited edition hot sauce bottles too. So very cool. No way. Hold up. Like I have a bottle. Like can I redeem it? What can I like? Well, the, so those bottles that we had at that were not the NFTs, but there will be oh, NFTs. Um, okay. Yeah. The, well, you'll be able to buy another one if you want. I got excited. <laughs> Just I got said, excited. Yeah, no, you, got to, you got to try that hot sauce before it, it gets launched as a as a viral NFT. Wow. I'm, that's, that's so cool. Like, guys, we're going to get spicy. We're literally getting spicy with NFTs. Like, this is so exciting. Also, um, congratulations to JM in the chat. JM, if uh, you could just let me know that you're here. So that way I could um, know that I'm going to give the ballet wallet to, like, a person that's here. So let me know. Um, you have like a, around a minute and then I'm going to re-roll. But what do you think of um, all the things that are going on? Because especially, you know, the market conditions like you were talking about before, people were like, oh, grr, blockchain dead. But like, wh what do you respond to these people? Like, like, how do you respond to say that, you know, NFTs are still here to stay? Yeah, no, I think it's it's an interesting conversation, right? And because so many people are being very vocal about their ideas and their perceptions about what the state of the economy means on other blockchains, we really see um, not necessarily a fatigue with our creators, but more of like a, oh gosh, like, why are they saying this? I don't see this here, but it's making things harder for me to like keep pushing forward and making what I'm making. Um, but then they make something and it's met with the wax fam getting really excited that they made something and they go and pick up the drop and it actually gets more attention because there's not a lot of drops happening as frequently um, in the NFT space as there used to be. So it gets more attention because people can see it. Uh, and it doesn't get drowned out. And I think that it really is such a testament to not only where blockchain is going, but where the creative industry is going. Whenever you do use the hashtag of like Wax Wednesday and you just search on Twitter, like what people dropped for Wednesday, um, just because it's the day of the week where we all just make Wednesday drops. And you can see so many different people being like intuitive and creating and inventive and making their drops really gamified and building something cool and something fun to collect and something fun to create. 
Um, and I usually just talk to people who have those kind of like, oh, the really negative mentalities and be like, if you feel that way, then you probably weren't in blockchain for the, for the right reasons anyway. I mean, we're, exactly. we're, we're here to make something cool. We're here to solve problems from Web 2 uh, in Web 3. And that is not necessarily all a financial gain type of situation. You know, a lot of it is just fixing inventory issues or supply and demand issues or even global shipping whenever viral NFTs really take like take the precedence of what people's ideas of what an NFT could be um, because there will be a lot of use cases that help things like environmental problems. I mean, think about how much it costs to produce things at a grand scale from like fast fashion to um, like giant hot wheels drops. Usually they're rare drops that you were used to doing. Like, I think it was like 30,000 of their more rare hot wheels that only get like one ship to each store. Well, with this hot wheel drop, they had to make way less, <laughs> like, like maybe, um, I think it was a little over a thousand of the actual redeemable hot wheels pieces and they still are Super making dope. just as much money. Yeah. They're still making just as much money on the NFTs as they would on the real life items. So it's, it solves a lot of consumer issues um, from like releasing carbon dioxide into the air and the shipping costs and the production labor costs. And it really just creates a whole new type of economy for traditional style um, IPs to really use. And I think it's it's going to be interesting to see how people who've built up their brand for years and years start adapting to the new wave of collectability for their assets. Well put, well put. And now that, you know, we're toward the end of the stream here, we're about to close out. Why, you know, if someone if someone comes up to you right now and says, why wax? What is your reply? Because it's carbon neutral and you can collect an NFT for free and you can make fun NFTs to collect. And that's that's what I like about Wax. Wax put it at the forefront of their mind whenever they were developing the blockchain is that we want to provide an awesome blockchain that we can make games on and trade game skins easily on Ooh. and put game assets in on. And we want to create a blockchain that can be super affordable and function have a lot of functionality and that's exactly what they delivered and they keep delivering updates to it all the time constantly about what the blockchain can do and it's really fun to see it play out and i really believe in wax and at, like i said i started on ethereum and then i came to the wax blockchain whenever i found out that they were offering solutions to things that i thought were problematic like everybody's biggest fud about nfts is always oh my gosh it's bad for the environment it per like perpetuates art theft and i'm like yep, yep. well just learn how to mint your nfts and then there's no art theft right because your ipfs hash it shows up and it flags whenever there's multiple IPFS hashes and collections. You know, if you do that, all of a sudden it helps reduce the art theft of your art. And then also the wax blockchain is carbon. Uh, I think it's, I think it's actually carbon negative now with the, uh, with things like tree pieces collections where you have um, tree planting ability and there's also carbon capture collections as well. So there's a lot of uh, carbon negative uh, aspects to the block, our blockchain itself. And I think that that's an important conversation to have because it's, like I said, that's everybody's biggest FUD or that, oh, it's too pricey. It prices me out to be a creator. And I'm like, well, the wax is not that way, <laughs> you know, because you don't have those gas fees um, to get started. There's so many different ways to get started for free. You can collect a PO app for free, you know, and have like no stakes way to get started. You can't lose anything. Um, and I think that this is how we start changing the narrative of what an NFT is and what an NFT can be. Because like I said, whenever I came over, it was all because there were no gas fees and it was carbon neutral. But what made me stay is just that the technology behind the Black's blockchain was literally five years advanced, like so far beyond anything any other blockchain had to do. It's like Polygon just now released a collection of with their in, in, like their Nickelodeon collection that was craftable and blendable. And like I said, the, the only other big um, collection to do that in the past was the, um, was the board eight yacht club with their mutant apes and wax has had that technology available for all creators to use without needing to know any dev work as early as I think it was last August. So it's just been really interesting to see, um, how far ahead wax thought 
and how much time they spent into really developing a good product for people to be able to use. Um, and now they're marketing it. And I think we're going to see a lot more people join our space because we offer some of the coolest things. And this is, this is why I chose wax. And this is why I was so passionate about wax from the minute I started putting things on wax. And, you know, I was able to change a lot of people's minds to the point where wax reached out to me. They're like, oh, we need you as a community manager, please work for us. I was like, okay, I'll do it. (laughs) That's amazing. I'm so happy for you. Um, you know, you're, you're a mom, you're working hard, you're an artist still grinding and doing art, which is absolutely amazing. And you're, you know, running the wax community, which isn't an easy job. You know, it's very time consuming. Wax has a huge community, as you know. And I very much encourage everyone to please follow Wax's Twitter. Please tune into these Twitter spaces. Shnazi is an amazing host, along with Tommy from Wax, who's always there as well. Shout out to Sir Tommy. He's pretty cool. So, yeah. Are there any last messages you would like to send out into the world of crypto internet while I la- drop my last Hot Wheels pack? Guys, this is the last Hot Wheels pack I have in my possession to give away. And I'm sad because I want to keep it, but I want to give it to you guys more. So, I'm going to give it to you. So, get ready for those. If you guys have already claimed something, please leave the next NFT for some friends in the chat. I know that you guys, there's some people that have not been able to claim. So, give them a chance, please. Thank you. Schnazzy, any last words? I'm going to drop your Twitter as well in the chat for people to follow you and also shout out wherever you else you want people to check you out. Well, thank you, Missy and Crypto. Um, yeah, one of the biggest things I think is a keynote I would like for everybody to be able to take home is that a lot of people enter the NFT space thinking, oh, I'm going to be able to, you know, I'm going to be able to do my art and I'm going to be able to make money off of it. And just keep in mind that it is a business. It's still something that you have to treat like your personal project. You have to love this thing. You have to, you have to put a lot of work into it. So if you create NFTs and you're not seeing those immediate sales, try to find the community that's involved with the blockchain that you're using. Try to find the community that loves to collect NFTs or loves to talk about other people's NFTs and really just immerse yourself in the community because I think that's the best way to get insight into, I mean, advertising ideas or marketing ideas or really just like engagement ideas or community building um, resources. And you can really learn a lot just by putting forth the effort to to get to know what's happening in the space. And it's, it's, and it is easy to get started, but it, it is hard to maintain. So what I always recommend for people who want to jump into NFTs and really create something is know that you do have the option here to make, you have the option here to make your life completely different. Um, and it is all linked to your own dedication about what you want to do and the effort that you're willing to put into it. And you can do it. And there are a lot of resources to help you do that easier. And we have them. We have talks every single week on Wednesdays. Um, all of our community is really receptive to new people entering and trying to test the waters with collections. Uh, so if that's something that you want to do, this is the perfect opportunity for not only like physical artists to start making NFTs, but also like we've got a lot of musical artists. We've got a lot of comic artists. We've got a lot of video game developers creating in the space, but that's just what's here already. I mean, I'm, I'm personally looking forward to seeing when the bloggers come out or when the blockchain philosophers start making yes. NFTs, you yeah. know, and there's there's room for everybody to make nfts here and really to utilize nfts as part of your business um and there's still so much room for innovation so if you haven't seen it done before that means that there's there's somebody who's going to do it and that person could be you and all you have to do is put forth the time to really learn and just take the time really to engage with the people who would make that easier for you. And I would love to be one of those people. I know that Missing Crypto would love to be one of those people. We've got so many amazing people in the Wax fam. You can find them on Twitter or on Telegram uh, very easily using hashtags. So I would definitely check it out. There's some really amazing people making amazing things. And the earlier you get into that conversation with those people, the better off you're going to be for the long term. Because like Miss Seen Crypto knows, these NFTs, these are here to stay. These NFTs are going to be for around forever, the ones that you create um, and the ones that other people have created. So it, it's worth the time to figure out what that could mean for you and what that really means for the future of everybody around you. 
Absolutely. That was very well said. That got me so bullish. Like, I am so ready. Like, not just bullish on wax, but bullish on, you know, all NFTs, the future of our community. This is only the beginning, guys. We are going to be laughing at what we're talking about right now in the next year. Never mind the next five years, 10 years. We're going to be looking back, cracking up. Like, this is what we're talking about. Like, oh, yeah, viral NFTs. That was like the big thing back then. Like, we're going to be laughing at this. This is crazy. Be a part of history, guys. Be a part of this movement not that you have to buy anything not that you have to do anything just watch just be a part of it tweet you know join in the wax wednesday spaces just be a part of the community and embrace it because this is not going anywhere there's so much wax love in the chat thank you to everyone that came today shenazi do you mind shouting out where everyone can find you check out your nfts whatever it shall be yeah, so I would actually recommend everybody one of my biggest utilities and one of the biggest utilities for everybody on uh, in the NFT ecosystem is Twitter. And you can find me at S-H-N-A-Z-Z-Y NFTs um, on Twitter. And from there, there's link trees where you can view all of my collections. And uh, Nephew Blocks and Atomic Hub on Wax are super awesome to be able to see collections there. Um, so I have the Schnazzy E-Girls collection, the Schnazzy Saga collection, and then the Schnazzy Stuff collection. So the Saga is the book, the E-Girls is the one where you'll find people like Missing Crypto that I've made POAPs for, and a collection of a, a woman-based 10,000 PFP collection. It's really fun because they're packs um, that you can open up and see. All of them are stakeable inside of a couple of different games. So if you're into that, check it out. Uh, and then also the Schnazzy Stuff is the collection where I make... Um, my actual viral art. So if you're interested in getting Beautiful. an actual physical painting, see it there. That's amazing. Thank you so much for coming, Shnazzy. Guys, again, tune into Wax Wednesday Spaces. I did drop the link to the Wax Twitter. It's Everything is in the description of the video as well. So definitely check that out. Follow Shnazzy. Give her some love. Check out her collection. And check out today's PO app so you could claim this for free. You have one shot to claim it. So go for it. Um, I'm very excited. This was a very beautiful piece. So thank you again, Shnazzy, for creating it. Thank you, everyone in the chat that came out today. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to hang out and just enjoy life with us. I feel like, you know, this is just a beautiful space with beautiful people like Shnazzy and you guys in the chat. So thank you so much. I will be back on Wednesday. I am super excited to do another show for this week. And then I'm going to like go and touch grass or something for the weekend. So I'm very excited. Have a great day, everyone. I will see you guys on Wednesday. If you enjoyed this show, please like, subscribe. After the show is over, share it with friends. Drop a comment on where you think nfts are going your thoughts on wax if again if you guys need any help with wax wallet creation um you can actually go on atomichub.io create a wallet for free on there if you need a code hit me up hit schnazzy up we got you also congratulations to jm home one link the ballet wallet and bull you finally claimed that last nft pack so thank you everyone i really appreciate you all much love have a great day and as always stay zesty peace Good morning, crypto Twitter, it's Misty Crypto, spreading crypto without your showing this better.